Hi everyone, I'm Scott Hope. Welcome to Mecham Accelerated, as we bring you coverage of Dana Mecham's 35th Original Spring Classic from the Indiana State Fairgrounds. We have an absolutely incredible lineup of collector cars, and it'll start off in a very significant way, guys, with the 1965 Shelby 289 Cobra Roadster. And this run of vehicles all selling at no reserve. Automatic transmission makes this one a bit distinctive. 289 cubic inches was the hot little small block used in the 289 Cobra Roadster. That's factory correct silver mink, only one of 43 small block Cobras finished in that color, the red leather interior. Carol Shelby signed dashboard. Yep, CSX 2549. This is a late production car. By now, they've switched from the 260 to the 289. They've switched from the Worman sector steering to rack and pinion steering. A very rare automatic transmission. Remember, 1965, the Shelby boys were beginning to turn their attention to the 427 Cobra. So this was one of the, the last small block Cobras, really to leave the factory before their full production efforts went into the big block car. And Carroll Shelby himself actually liked driving these cars with an automatic transmission. In fact, he had his 427 Cobra, his personal car, fitted with an automatic transmission. He owned that car from the time it was built till his passing. Well, you can understand that with all of the racing he did. He probably got to a point where, okay, I'm done with the four speed. <laughs> You got it, sir. There it is. Sold on the telephone for $1 million. Here now is one of the holy grails in the Mustang world. Boss 429, 1969 in Raven Black. In the first year of just a two-year run, look at the quality of the presentation right there. That's that big exotic, which referred to as a semi-hemi, 429 cubic inch behemoth of a power plant. In fact, that engine wouldn't even fit in the engine compartment at the production line. They had to send it to an outside company, Carcraft in Michigan, to make modifications to the car to accommodate that engine. It's a four-speed, 391 traction locked rear axle. A showstopper, guys. When you're looking at these cars from the front, which we were just a second ago, you'll notice the difference on this one. The little running pony, pony over the red, white, and blue tri bar is offset to the driver's side. Now, when we see a 1970 Mustang come up, or uh, you'll notice that it moved to the center. So if you're standing in front of a car, it's easy to tell that the 69 is offset, the 70 is centered. Right, hang on with me. I know an easier way. Count the headlights. If you're standing at the side, there's an easier way. Well, the two headlights too. Right. Or the front. 1969. Body color scoop. 1970. They're all black. Very good. 410. dollars Now 410. Anybody get Go get his face. 410 bid. Yeah, do it. 410 bid. You better get 420. 400. 420. 410. 420,000. <laughs> So four hundred and ten thousand dollars for the '69 Mustang Boss 429 Fastback. On the block now. More racing history is as if what we've already seen isn't enough. A 1969 Dodge Hemi Daytona, the one that broke the 200 mile an hour closed course barrier. At Talladega, driven by Buddy Baker in March. Of 1969 began life as a production Charger Hemi 500. It was stolen. It was a press car. It was stolen. It was recovered, taken over at Nichols Engineering. And this is the result the prototype NASCAR Daytona, the flush rear window, part of the 500 package, but the wing and the distinctive front end. This is where it all started with the legend of the arrow-themed Dodge Daytona. 
426 cubic inches, of course, of Hemi power with a four-speed transmission known as DC-93. It's actually driven by Don White to some race wins in USAC, USAC stock car competition, but obviously best known for breaking the closed course speed record at over 200 miles per hour. And it will sell. It is in front of us here at no reserve. Wow. People wonder what the NASCAR style 426 Hemis were putting out as far as power back in this time period. And it's somewhere in the 575 horsepower range. That combined with the arrow, 200 miles an hour. Just sold for $500,000. Well, here is the Lamborghini legend, if you will. The Kuntop, 1988. This is an LP 5000. Unrestored, all original odometer in kilometers. Just a little over 16,000. Built February 1988. Gated five speed manual transmission. 420 horsepower with a double overhead cam, 5.2 liter V12. The rear wing, a $5,500 option. And we're already $400,000. This is the, the stuff of my high school dreams right in front of me here. I've been waiting all week for this one across the block. I love the Kuntash. The, the only knock for me on this car is the brutal front bumper. It got very chunky as the 80s went on. And, you know, John, you mentioned yeah. that option of the wing. I actually think it looks cooler without that rear spoiler. You really get a sense of those lines when it's not broken up by that spoiler in the bottom. Right. Well, in, in defense of Lamborghini, that front bumper was not their idea. <laughs> well, I understand that, yes. And it was kind of... Born out of necessity, and it's like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, it's amazing, though, how Lamborghini hung on to the angular lines, even in the newer Gallardo and some other models that we see. Well, that's the Quattro Valvo Ball, That's four valves per cylinder. 32 valve, uh, no, not 32. Let's see, uh, help me with my math here. That's a 12 cylinder with four. 48. 48, thank you. Three times. Nine, carry the two and yeah, five by six. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of hit good, the wall. Good, good. That, didn't <laughs> I? <laughs> you know, guys, I very quickly told the story of how the Kuntash got its name, too. That's a great story. Yeah, but it's nice to get Let's do it. Let's one time 540. Give me 540. One time. One time. Yes, 540. <laughs> It'd be done. It'd be done by now. One time. 530. 540. One time. 535. 535. 535. 535. 535. Let's go. Hammer. Let's get it. Oh. Uh, Told you it should be 550. You should have been 550. 545. 545. It's coming to the end. If he wants to go, he's going to get 55. $545,000, another epic bitter battle on the phone, on the internet, $545,000, guys. As good as that car is, it's still outside the top 10 today. Oh, my word. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Meekum Accelerating. I'm Scott Hope. Thanks so much for joining us.